And here is one of the drawbacks of non-network chargers. Hey everyone, on today's EV Basics video, I wanna talk about non-network chargers. Now, by non-networked, I mean actual EV chargers that have a J1772 plug or a Tesla plug, not something like a level one outlet where you would have to bring your own charge cord. There are some definite advantages to non-network chargers. For starters, they're typically free because they're just like a home charger. They're just wired into a 240 volt, you know, 50 amp maybe circuit, and there's just a plug on the end of it, and you just plug it into your car, and it starts charging. There's no apps, there's no RFID cards, there's new QR codes, nothing that would prevent you from just plugging in and charging. And so you also don't have to worry about any kind of activation or the fact that the charger is maybe not on a Wi-Fi network or a cell network. Now, these are often found at restaurants, hotels, any kind of hospitality where it's a service that they're providing you by staying there, by eating there. So this one is at the GVSU Innovation Center. So they provide this as a free service to people that come here and use these facilities. Now, for the most part, these are just turned on. So I can see here that the power is on it's actually charging. So you just get here, make sure that it's actually active and you just plug in. There are some cases where these chargers are not active. So somebody inside has to turn on a breaker. Hotels will often do this to just let people who are actually staying at the hotel use the chargers. So they'll have the breaker turned off. You'll get here and the power light will be off. So that's a good clue that chances are it's not turned on, hopefully, it is working, but it's something where you have to go inside and actually ask them to use it. Just like any other charger, you may need an adapter for your vehicle. There are still two standards for level two charging. There's J1772, and then there's the Tesla slash NAX standard. So depending on which vehicle you have, you may need to get an adapter to use one or the other. For example, if you pull up to one of these and it's a J1772 plug and you have a Tesla, then you need to bring your J1772 to Tesla adapter. Some of these stations, if there are two plugs, will actually have power sharing. So if you see that there are two plugs and somebody's plugged in, there's a good chance that if you plug yours in, now you're gonna be sharing the power. Looking this up on PlugShare is a good way to find that out. A good example of this is the off the chain brewstillery in Grand Haven that just opened. So what that means, if you're the only person charging, you're gonna get the full 40 amps, nine point something kilowatts. But if you're splitting, you're gonna get 20 amps, so you're gonna get about half of that power. The real discussion here is about etiquette. If they're free, somebody is paying for this. And the question is, do you feel good using that service for free? So if these are at a hotel or a restaurant and you're using those services, then chances are you're paying for that with your room charge with your meal or something similar. In this case, if you are a client here at GVSU or you're a visitor, you know, they're gonna cover that cost. And here is one of the drawbacks of non-network chargers. I was not able to look up on PlugShare or any other network that somebody was already using this. I didn't know that this charger was gonna be used. I actually wanted to plug in my car to show that but this is a great example. This person decided to come here and charge. So this charger doesn't talk to any networks that would let you look up whether or not it's in use or offline or out of service in any way. If you decide to use one of these chargers, one way to signal as a courtesy to other EV drivers how long you're gonna be charging there is an EV charging etiquette sign. So there are typically two sides to these one is that you're opportunity charging and you really don't need the charge, so it's okay to unplug me. And then the other one, it says, you know, do not unplug me. I need this charge to get where I'm going. And then typically there are some spaces you can fill out. Uh, probably the most important one is to put your phone number so somebody could reach you. Uh, in this case, there's also a slot to let people know when you are done charging and that you're willing to let somebody unplug your car after that time. And if you're opportunity charging, you can put your phone number and if you're willing to come and move your car, they can contact you and then, you know, hopefully you can get there in a reasonable period in time, unplug your car, move it and let somebody else charge. This particular one, 
I got from a Etsy store called Take Charge and Go. I'll put a link in the video. Obviously you can make something like that yourself. Maybe just get a piece of paper, uh, put it on your windshield or someplace that somebody is gonna see when they drive past the charger. Here in Michigan, if you are a Consumer's Energy customer, they did give these away at some of the National Drive Electric Week events. If you wanna get one of these, you can email powermydrive at cmsenergy.com. That's powermydrive at cmsenergy.com. I'll put a link in the video description and they should be able to send you one or two of these for free. Again, this is only for customers of Consumers Energy. Now we all like to get stuff for free, but let's be honest, when something is free, that means that somebody else is paying for it. If you decide to use one of these chargers and it's free, uh, consider paying for that service, asking if there's a way to pay. Uh, if it's a restaurant, please go to that restaurant. Don't park your car there and then drive off and go eat somewhere else. If it's at a hotel, you really should be staying there. And if you're not a paying customer, they might be willing to let you charge for just a cash payment. And that would be the right thing to do rather than just plugging in and walking away. If you are a plug share user, doing a plug share check-in on this kind of charger is even more important than regular chargers. That is one way that you can signal that you are using the charger, how long you're going to be there, whether the charger is still working. So that's very, very helpful to the next people who are going to be charging simply because these chargers are not on a network where you can identify those kind of issues. Please also see the other EV Basics topics that I'm working on. Some are already out there, but I'm working on others. So if you want to stay tuned, please subscribe. If you enjoyed or learned from this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.